Welcome to my channel. My name is Ria and in this video we are going to talk about what the houses mean in astrology. Right, but before we begin, I do request you to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so that you can be notified every time I post a video. So let's get started. Now in astrology there are 12 houses, right? A total of 12 houses and each house represents a certain area of our life. So the first house is the house of the self. It represents everything to do with the self, right? How we look, how the world sees us, our appearance, you know, how we project ourselves to the world. The first house is also the house of leadership, right? So very briefly, the first house is the house of the self. It's about our appearance. It's about how we project ourselves to the world and how the world sees us. It's our identity. Now, the second house in astrology is about finances, right? It's our own finances it's our own possessions right so that's representative of the second house along with finances and possessions material possessions the second house can also represent skills right it's the house of skills as well it's also the house of the face right the second house often can represent the face of the person. It's to do with our self-worth as well. That's the second house. The third house in astrology represents our siblings, right? The brothers and sisters that we have. It represents our immediate environment. It represents short distance travel. It represents our logical mind, thinking, that sort of thing. The fourth house in astrology represents our home. It represents our physical home. It represents our emotional home. It also represents where we come from, right? Our roots. It's also the house of emotions. It gives away a lot about our emotional makeup, what we find close to our hearts, right? It's a very, very introverted house. It gives clues about the family life of the individual, the home situation, the emotional situation, that sort of thing. The fifth house in astrology represents creativity. It represents hobbies and having fun and pleasure in children. The sixth house is the house of work, right? It's the job that we have. It's not our highest career, but it's the job that we have. It's also healthcare. It's also the day-to-day -day routine that we have, right? It's the little things of our day. What's our routine? What's our diet? What's our exercise? What's the schedule like, right? What we do as a job, that sort of thing. What we do as a service to others. That's the sixth house. The seventh house in astrology represents marriage, right? It's the house of legal relationships and marriage is one of the important legal relationships. Another legal relationship that I can think of is a business partner, right? That also falls in the domain of the seventh house. The seventh house also represents things like legal issues, right? Lawyers. So anything to do with the law, legal issues, that sort of thing is also the seventh house. But primarily, it's our relationships. The eighth house in astrology is a very subconscious house. It represents our psychology. It represents our deep, intimate bonds, right? The intimate bonds that we have with people. It also represents transformation, changes. That's the eighth house. It's also the house of the occult, right? If you're into the occult and that sort of thing, then that's the eighth house. The ninth house is representative of distant lands. It's representative of philosophy. It's representative of traveling but to faraway places, to foreign places. It's also education, higher education. The third house is the house of, you know, education till say school level. But this is like the higher degrees that we get, that sort of thing. It's also the house of abstract thinking, right? We have an intellectual, logical mind, Mercury, but we also have a philosophical mind, right, Jupiter. So this is the house of that sort of th stuff. Religion is also associated with this house. So in short, religion, philosophy, abstract thinking, higher education, foreign travel. The 10th house is associated with a public image, right? It's also associated with our 
career, the career that we aspire to. It's also the house of business. It's also the house of politics and the government. It's the highest of the high. It's the 10th house. So it represents all these things. It's a very public, extroverted house. The 11th house in astrology represents our social circle the people we network with, the groups that we belong to. It's not our close friends. Our close friends would be our fourth house, but this is more like, okay, I know this person. Yeah, I'm, I know this person. I belong to this group. I'm part of this community, that sort of thing. The 11th house is also our hopes, goals, dreams, and desires, right? What do I dream about having? What is my ultimate goal? That sort of thing. It's also the house of science, tech, innovation, progress, equality, human rights, social activism, that sort of thing. The 12th house in astrology is the last house. It's where things come to a close. So it's the house of endings. It's the house of, you know, where things close out. It's also the house of, again, the subconscious. It's the most spiritual house as well. The 12th house can also represent addictions. It can represent um, a tendency to escape right the 12th house is also associated with hospitals and drugs that sort of thing so that's the 12th house in a nutshell so in this brief video i just wanted to give you the broad themes associated with each of the houses and i hope you enjoyed it if you did do subscribe to my channel and i will see you next time have a great day bye